Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's short video. And uh, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Virginia. I hope you're having a, a nice day where you are. And uh, the title of this week's uh, short video is called The Anticipation of God. And uh, regarding the Lord Jesus, there's a lot of meaningful terms, theological terms like incarnation or redemption atonement, resurrection, ascension, etc. But I was thinking of one the other day, and I thought of anticipation. It's kind of like foreknowledge of God. Um, and a verse that I've always interpreted to mean God will often answer a petition or a prayer before you even call, before you even pray it. Uh, and here it is, Isaiah 65, verse 24. Listen to this verse. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And uh, back in 1988, um, Trudy and I had felt a desire to study the Word of God, and so we enrolled in what was then called Pinecrest Bible Training Center in upstate New York. Uh, it was affordable, and we had saved up a certain amount of money, and uh, the plan was I was going to go to class in the mornings, and then have lunch and then go to work in the afternoon. Trudy was with the kids, and and um, so she did not have an income either. So um, the problem was it was in a rural area, and I was unable to find work uh, for quite a while. Uh, September went by, October, November, and our savings was kind of in a nosedive week by week and dwindling down, getting close to nothing. And so we prayed, uh, I think, towards the end of November, uh, and asked the Lord whether we should go back to Wisconsin to my old job. They told me I could have my job back in Wisconsin. And, and we just prayed. We said, Lord, should we go back to to there? And uh, the next day, uh, we walked from the uh, mobile home where the married students lived and up to the, the uh, main office building where you get your mail. And there was a card in the mail. Uh, from uh, an 80 year old lady back in Wisconsin that we didn't really know very well. She was the mother of, of another lady that we knew in the church. And, and this 80 year old gal sent us a little card of encouragement and said, I think it's a good idea that you are going to Bible school and I wanted to send something along to encourage you. And I looked at it and said, look at that sweet card from this lady, Biola was her name and a little $5 check. and man, that's sweet. We don't really even know this lady. And then I, I looked a little bit closer and it was $500. And back in 1988, that was a lot of money. And uh, that took us through the rest of that month, the month of December. And uh, by the end of that uh, money, uh, I found work. I found a job. I got to work with uh, a construction company and could work in the afternoon in the hours that I was available. And so it was just a real neat sign from the Lord that you know, we were doing what he wanted us to do. And I don't take any credit at all for that. That was just God's grace. And I, I thank him for that, you know. But before we even prayed the prayer, it had already been in the mail for two or three days. And so I always thought of that verse, and it comes to pass before they call, I will answer. And while they're yet speaking, I will hear. And, uh, maybe you've seen that where before you even pray a prayer, sometimes God already sends the answer. That's what happens sometimes because, you know, he... He knows what the needs are. But, you know, there's there's a, uh, a wider uh, application of this verse, uh, kind of an all-encompassing application that, um, that I thought of, really, uh, just the other day. And uh, Jesus knew that as the human race, his creation, um, that we would rebel as a race. We would choose to go our own way. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him, on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So, um, you know, God knew that we were going to rebel and go our own way. Uh, so, Jesus is called the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, in Revelation 13, 8, it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, and whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That means before the world was even created, Jesus was called the lamb, that sacrificial lamb of God. First Peter 
chapter 1, verse 18 says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver and gold, from your vain uh, conversation or lifestyle received by tradition from your fathers, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who truly was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So he was already set up as the Lamb of God before the world was even created. And uh, so uh, he was proclaimed to be the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world, even before uh, we were created. So here's the summary. Before we were born, God knew we would need a Savior. And after we were born, God had already provided for us through our Savior. And though we had not yet realized our need of a Savior, God had sent Jesus to die for our sins and rise from the dead. So, uh, you know, he invited us, he, he drew us, and the connection was made as we finally reached out to him. So I see that as a fulfillment of that verse in Isaiah 65, before they call, I will answer. And... Uh, I got a couple little songs today that uh, I'd like to share with you if, if there's maybe time for both of them. But listen to the lyrics of these songs. They're, 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 they're true in my life for sure. You're all that I ever wanted. All that I ever need. And though I wasn't It's eternal, and this I know is true. I could never repay the debt of love I owe to you. Who is like the Lord my God, compassionate and full of mercy? Who compares to your great love? There's none in all the earth I will sing of your love and grace that covers all my guilt and shame in all the earth who is like the Lord in all the earth who is like the Lord lyric that says that uh, though I wasn't looking you were after me God was after us you know before we were even aware of our need of him and uh, there's another song uh, that I'd like to share with you by a man named Mark Altrogi and uh, it's called I'm Forever Grateful <laughs> slightest notion to look for the Lord, um, you know, he had already prepared the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world because he knew that I would rebel, go my own way, be in total darkness, be lost, 
And um, I'm glad that before I even called, he had answered. And I know you are too, if you're a Christian. And uh, if you're still looking, if there's still kind of an empty place in your heart and you know there's just something more out there besides what you found as far as fulfillment in life, um, turn to Jesus. Yeah, the Bible says, him that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. And uh, he offers us total forgiveness, total peace with God. He paid for our sins on the cross. And then he ascended into heaven after he rose from the dead. He sent his Holy Spirit to come and dwell within us, to live inside of us, to give us peace, comfort, and power to live a godly life. We'll still mess up sometimes because we can do that if we choose to. Uh, but his Spirit will help us again and again. So, Amen. Before they call, I will answer, said God in Isaiah 65. And he did. He gave Jesus. And I hope you have a great week. Love you.